On today's episode of Watch Jericho, our game plan is to fix my Harley Davidson golf cart clown car because there's a car show coming up this weekend and I think this might be the coolest car. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo, and like I said, today we are here with my Harley Davidson AMF golf cart. And in the last video, of course, we got this thing off the trailer. We bought it for 500 bucks, cleaned it up, got it to turn over, and I think we were making some good progress, but no matter what we tried, we could not get spark out of this thing. Then my brother came over here the other day and cleaned and cleaned the points and just kept working on it and kept working on it. And eventually we got it started. And I'm gonna show you guys all of that progress right now. We also spent a ton of time getting the brakes unstuck because they were fully seized. Basically this thing had to have been sitting underwater. I bet there was like water up to here at an angle or something like that because the brakes rusted into the brake drums. So uh, here's some video of us using a torch and beating those brake drums off for 30 minutes. The wheels are off the golf cart and Eric and I have been trying to free it up for a couple of minutes here. We've both been standing on our pry bars, bouncing as hard as we can. And look at the pile, you okay? Yeah. Of rust. So here's a reference for you. The pile is taller than that. Absolute insanity what's coming out of this thing. And we're flushing the fuel tank at the same time. We've got new fuel going in there. Much better. Look at that, the golf cart fixer. Eric's been over here running the torch for a long time. Josh just walked in, picked up a pry bar, goes, oh, look, it's done. <laughs> there goes my hero. <laughs> he didn't wear sweatpants today. <laughs> it is not a sweatpants day. Man. Oh, the light, the, uh, the pads are sticking to it like none other. That is crazy. Oh, they're about to explode out of there. Anyway, the uh, brakes themselves fell in half. You can take a look at that. Here's one of the pins. You gotta get that out of there so we don't lose it. There's the retainer. Oh, that's all the parts. Wow, just parts everywhere. Yeah, it was trashed. It's sliding off. Very slowly. I'm taking the pad with it. I don't think there's any other way. Oh, yep, the pads just fell in half. Those things are so rotten. Wow. Just the amount of rust that came out of this thing was out of out of this world. Only one side's rolling. It is an open death hunt. Now they're going equal. It is, it's really geared low. Huh. Well, we're going to have to get some new rear gears so we can go 70. <laughs> that probably took 30 minutes per wheel. And luckily, I was here, Eric was here, and Josh was here. And with all three of us, we could just take turns beating on the thing with a sledgehammer and eventually we got it to come apart, which was just crazy, the amount of effort that it took. We pulled the wheels off and worked them back and forth with a pry bar forever and uh, massaged it with a sledgehammer. Anyway, when all that was done, I took the drums off and took them over to O'Reilly's and they turned these very tiny specialty brake drums for me, which don't even fit on the machine, but they got it done. <laughs> And now the drums are painted and back on and the golf cart rolls, which is a lot of progress. Uh, when it didn't move, it was very hard to work on. And of course, like I said, my brother sat over here troubleshooting the ignition for a long time and he ended up hardwiring the coil and we got it to run for a couple of seconds. But I think I know what's wrong. When he left, he was like, just rewire the whole thing. But it might be simpler than that. I'll show you guys what's going on when we start cranking. Here's the spark tester, of course. Uh, I'll start cranking right now. We thought that was some weird issue or like an impulse or something like that. And if I remember right, there were probably some comments saying it was the ignition switch. And I was like, it's clearly not the ignition switch. But then when I was messing with it just a second ago, I realized the ignition switch is not keeping the run contact made while it's in crank. So I'll show you how I figured that out. It's gonna be annoying. Here's your headphone warning. Keys on, horn works. No horn. Obviously the horn runs off of that run circuit off the ignition switch, which makes me think that what's really happening is we're just losing our run connection, which is what's powering the ignition coil. So this should be pretty simple. There's no reason the thing doesn't run. Everything was new. The coil was new, the condenser was new. We went in on this thing, but when we got it working, it worked fine on the original coil. So the original coil is actually back in the golf cart now, and I'm gonna pull the switch out 
and go see if our Rileys has something that will drop in. I really hope they do. The only thing that's tough is this isn't a super generic key like most of the ignition switches are. This is a real key, which I'd like to maintain. This key switch has a nice knurled uh, nut on it and it comes loose, look at that. Couldn't have asked for a better outcome. Ah, she came right off. All right, we'll push this thing out. She's out, pull the wires off it and see if we can get a replacement. Well, I started cutting because that was really the right thing to do. And so far I've ripped out this much of that junk cloth wire. We're gonna replace all this with modern stuff. Nice wire, split loom tubing over it. We'll tape it all back up and make it nice and out of the way. But then I lost power at the ignition switch. And I was like, what, how? <laughs> the wire literally just fell apart. If you can see that it's corroded all the way through right there. So uh, now I've got to rip out the main wire that comes from the starter relay. I got to bring that all the way back up to the front and then maybe it'll run, we'll see. Obviously it had power before, but it was just a rotten old wire. And also for some reason, the fuel gauge was running off the coil, which it makes sense. It was a good place to pick 12 volts back up, but I really wish they had done that differently. Like just wired it straight to the ignition switch. It seems like it would be easier that way. After all that work, I was like, these points are still garbage. So I went to O'Reilly's and I did 30 minutes of research. I was comparing this store called Vintage Golf Parts with every single cross-reference I could find. I found a bunch of threads about like Bob's golf carts or something like that. And everybody said that the, this engine specifically, not the Columbia that came later, but this one that was in like the 64s or whatever year, this is a 66D, um, all the way up until like 1970, this part doesn't exist. So I tried every single cross-reference. I looked at every set of points they had in the store. Nothing comes close to this. So. I took the points back out and I used a die grinder with a wire wheel and I sat there and polished the points for a while. And they're not better, honestly. They're pitted, they're junk. They're also fully irreplaceable, which is a little bit unfortunate. After I did all that work and I put this back together, take a look at this. Step two, uh, I may be way off on the timing, but I shouldn't be that far off. It only moves about five degrees, so it shouldn't be horrific. suck my meter lead up there good thing it didn't get pulled in look at that it runs so i'm very excited about that it ran really well honestly um but we got to get fuel into this and we also need to go make some fuel for this because it's two stroke we got to run two stroke gas um i have cleaned and cleaned and cleaned the tank i ran a bunch of fresh gas through it. we sloshed it all around trying to get all the old varnished gas out so now i need to go grab some two stroke oil back to o'reilly's we go and a gallon of gas or so and we'll use that mixing cup in there to mix up our two-stroke mixture and hopefully we can get some fuel into this carburetor and the thing starts running for real i'm gonna go ahead and put the ignition switch back which it was actually fine uh it does power the coil off its own terminal and whenever the ignition switch is on the coil is always powered which is probably why they pulled the fuel gauge power from that as well of course we found more horrible wires that just fell apart. But now that those are replaced, we're good to go there. So I'm just gonna put all the wires back on real quick and we'll start buttoning this up and hopefully it runs with some fuel. And we are back at O'Reilly's to pick up some two stroke oil and uh, maybe a mixing cup. Uh, two stroke oil. Okay. And a mixing cup would be awesome. Don't How small of a mixing uh, cup? One that I can use to mix the oil into the gas. You pass the two stroke. I don't know if this paint bucket is rated for gasoline, but it's about to be rated for gasoline. And we found the two stroke oil we needed. It's nice thick plastic, it'll hold up. Anyway, thanks Trish. Take care, hon. See ya. Yeah, if it melts, it melts. It's running on its own! Now I had to choke it like crazy to make it run. So maybe if I actually use the choke, I you know did it the, the choke way that works for real. You just cover the entire thing so it's pulling all of that vacuum through the uh, fuel system there. And that usually dislodges a bunch of stuff, just kind of rips the fuel through. 
So now I think if we start it again on choke, we might have a chance. So here's full choke. Okay, it didn't love running off choke, but that thing was flying. There's a weird issue where the exhaust is hitting right here. You guys can see uh, it's rubbing on the exhaust. It seems like it kind of always has been just a little bit and only when it's shutting down, even when it's idling, it's away from the exhaust. But it seems like we're getting there. It still needs a master cylinder. The master cylinder is completely junk, but I think I could drive it right now. I just need to jack the thing back up and finish putting all the wires in like uh, fuel gauge and stuff. So we'll find out here in just a moment if the fuel gauge works. And if it does, I'm gonna call that a big win. I was almost completely done finishing up my rewire, hiding the wires, putting the split loom on, hooking the fuel gauge back up, and I twisted off the screw that holds on the condenser. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be completely done with it tonight. I need to run home where I've got tons of uh, the hardware that I can use on this thing, just tiny little hardware. Unfortunately, I keep like normal size hardware here at the shop, but they were 5 16 nuts and the screws were like, you know, an 18th of an inch, tiny stuff. I just need to slide a piece of split loom on over those wires going up to the fuel gauge and then one more that runs to the back to kind of protect all those underneath it, zip tie it to the chassis and she is done. Check out my pretty wiring in here. Much better than all that temporary stuff we had. Everything's where it belongs. And this thing should be a runner. So I hope you guys are ready to see me rolling around the clown cart. So we got the cab flipped down Everything's back together. All the wiring is buttoned up. I've got the bolts that I needed. The condenser is mounted. This thing is running well. So we're going to go full choke. Ooh, a little less choke. There we are. Ready? Oh. This is a very loud golf cart. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> so it turns out three wheeled golf carts are incredibly sketchy. Yeah, look at that CBT go. We are flying. The engine mounts on it are shot though, and when you're at high RPM, it starts banging into things, and that's not ideal. A little less than ideal. I know there's no way to replace these engine mounts, so. Uh, I've got some hockey pucks. We, we <laughs> solid mount it, always solid mount it. The tires are flat spotted, that's why it was bouncing, we think. The tires are, they're very rough, and also there's no shock absorber, of course. <laughs> it does not work. We may have a problem. May? We don't know when to stop. That's really the problem here. So the golf cart is 100% back together. 
We've got the floor in there now. Yeah, a little of the carpet's missing. We've got the driver's seat back on, which of course wasn't bolted in. It is missing the bottom, but we have this John Deere cushion that's gonna go on there. Jake and I have finished rewiring the whole thing. So now when the ignition switch is on, do the honors. Hey, we've got headlights. We've got both tail lights. Uh, do you want to do it's it sucks to do this because it's going to ruin the glass, but Oh, oh there you go. Nailed it. The wiper didn't work. There was like a fusible link in there that was dead. The lights like the wires were just ripped off of them. We rewired everything. So now it runs right. Everything works. The fuel gauge works. I think that's a success. We fixed everything. So we're finally ready to close this thing up and we might take the clown hat off the top. I don't know. All right, you ready? <laughs> now we can use the handles because we have seats. Oh yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, that doesn't make it a whole lot easier. No, it's not. It's never easy. Yeah, so the pins just fall in on the way down. Yeah. But they don't come out on the way up. Come on, I got mine. I couldn't. <laughs> uh, my thing was too bent out of shape. There we go. That's okay. unfortunate. So we got the thing fully ready. Locked and loaded. Uh, let's put the canopy back. The thing I noticed about this that just blew my mind is that it's welded conduit. So whoever did this is awesome. It's not easy to weld galvanized conduit. Also, you're pretty crazy for doing it. I don't know why you wouldn't use something else. It's, but, just, oh, it's just mild toxic fumes. Yeah. The cool part is it weighs nothing. Uh, let's flip it and pull. I, I guess we'll cut these strings off. I figured we had to keep the fringes alive though. <laughs> the fringes are like important to the design of the golf car, you know? So let's uh, trim these. All right, that looks better. Now I just need to finish tucking the front end and this thing is completely back together. Too bad we didn't get a tailgate. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchjrgo.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time the candyland clowns have returned also i figured out what was going on here when we bought this thing it came with a round piece of fence like mesh fence and they had bolted this to the roof and somebody i said it was like some kind of vent and i was like it doesn't make any sense the roof's still completely there what it was is they had that fence wire on this and it probably had a clown hat that's all i can think is it had a clown hat on top of the car and uh, it's kind of the one thing that makes sense. Here's what we cut out of that thing. Unbelievable. And then there's another pile over here. That is all the trash that came out of the electrical system as we <laughs> rebuilt from scratch. I think that's a success. We fixed everything. <sighs> <sighs> and then he died.